Okay, let's finish with uh, a couple examples of how you do this with images. So a mesh is interesting experimentally, but in practical applications, you probably want to do some more sophisticated images, okay? And so, and again, you can do the Fourier filtering at the speed of light. So I could do image processing at the speed of light. So here's an example from the Fundamental Photonics book where they took an object, which is this here, and they performed a Fourier transform, and here's the mask. And they basically only let the DC portions through, and you could see you only get basically the magnitude, which is the brightness of the image, but you lose a lot of the crispness and the clarity, which is the high frequency aspect, so that only the low frequencies get through. Then they took the same image, and they ran it through an optical system, and they blocked the DC portion, and then you can see the high frequencies, which are the edges, where things are changing rapidly from one color to another. That's all you get through. And so you can see how you can apply this to image filtering. Now, a simpler way to do a lot of this is to do it with computing, um, just to, image, to, to set it up instead of doing an optical experiment. Of course, you can't do it at the speed of light, but I'll show you some good examples of what you could do optically if you had the appropriate system. And so we're going to use, for these examples, the fast Fourier transform. Okay, And the credit for the next few slides in terms of the images, etc., goes to this website where you can download this software. You can also do transforms in MATLAB and we'll, that'll be a homework problem this week as well. So let's do a fast Fourier transform on the Lena, Lena image, on this Lena or Lena image. This is from that website. And they basically did a full round transform on this where they went from the spatial domain to the frequency back to the spatial domain. And when they did that using the fast Fourier transform, they compared the images and they found that it was only 0.22% off between the original and the, and the reconverted recon image. So why is this? Why is it not perfect? Well, this software, like most, again, uses the fast Fourier transform, which is an approximation, okay? And I'm not going to read all this because I don't know what this means, but it's just remember it's an approximation when you do the fast Fourier transform. It's not the full Fourier transform. Let's look at that image in terms of what the Fourier transform looks like. Here's the magnitude, and here's the phase, okay? And if you break this up, the, here's the magnitude only, and here's the phase only. The magnitude basically takes into consideration that in addition to having sharp changes between regions as things grow from black to dark and you have frequencies with those, it also builds in the amplitude of the wave as, it, as of the frequencies as they might change as well. Look at something a little bit more familiar. Here's a, uh, here's a, here's a, a rectangular slit. You run it through the software. Here's the Fourier transform. Beautiful. There you go. You can see diffraction, right? Diffraction is more spread out this way because the slit's narrower. It's longer this way, and so the diffraction's less, less uh, has, a, has a closer spacing, less spread out. And so you can see how Fourier transform also, as we said, would predict diffraction as well. And you can also use Fourier transform to adjust things like optical contrast and um, brightness and things like that. So in this case, you're increasing the contrast. In this case, you're decreasing the contrast. So if you wonder how software like Photoshop does this and other, you know, photo editing materials, uh, photo editing software, they use Fourier transforms and they basically, once you, once you put something into the Fourier domain, right, you can then look at which things and find those sharp edges and things like that and start to amplify them or blur them using Fourier principles. Here's a great example. Here's the original image, which is basically a, a, a window screen, which is a wire mesh placed over top this background. They applied a Fourier filter to get rid of the high frequencies. They didn't get rid of all of it. They passed the DC and some of the lower frequencies because the mesh is a really high frequency, very small features, very periodic close spacing, so it's going to be out here. So they block those portions of it, and it's also going to be diffracted, right? If we look at the light coming through this, because the wires are oriented this way and this way, the dots for that would only show up here, whereas the parts for the other objects here would show over here. So we're letting all those through. We're only blocking the high frequencies associated with the mess, which when we showed the diffraction example would only be here and here. And then here is the final image. So this was done with software, where here's the original image. They, in the software, said, here's my Fourier filter. And lo and behold, the mesh is completely removed. So that's pretty cool, because you could clean up images. You could take a photograph through a mesh, apply Fourier transforms, 
and say remove mesh and then at the end of the day it'll clean the image up and give you the image without the mesh in the way. So you can see how powerful this is from a mathematical standpoint and if you can do this optically again you can do it at the speed of light. Here's a simple sine wave. So I just have a sine wave where I'm changing from maximum amplitude to minimum amplitude in this direction here. Here's the Fourier transform. If I zoom in on this, I zoomed in here, you see that you get a center dot and two dots on either side. So what, what is this? Well, the center dot is the DC portion, okay? Because even this has a DC portion to it. Um, again, you're, there's no change in, in this direction, right? So there's a DC portion there. But I do have a change in this direction. And why do I have two dots? Because this is just one sine wave. Well, the fact that I have two dots it represents the fact that the sine wave could run in this way or this way, and I couldn't tell the difference, right? If I ran my sine wave this way or this way, I could not tell the difference. And so one represents one direction, one represents the other direction. Let's do it again with a different sine wave. So it's a higher frequency one. Look what happened here. The dots got pushed further out. When, if this is the DC version and this is higher frequencies, the higher frequency the object, then the further out the Fourier transform representation will be because as I go further away from the center, I get higher frequencies. So when you're doing your experiments this week in the lab and you do Fourier filtering, the further you are away from the center in the Fourier plane represents how high of a frequency that's representing, how sharp of a transition or how high of a frequency or repetition in the, in the, uh, in the, in the object. And let's look at this in terms of images uh, a little bit further here. So in, in terms of image compression. So here is the Fourier representation. Okay, I have that and I'll put the magnitude here. Okay, And if I do the inverse Fourier transform, I can turn this into this. Now if you look at this and you did this as a bitmap, that would be a very big file, image file. Right? But if you looked at this in terms of a JPEG, which is Fourier transform compressed image, it would contain the information just say have two dots here and a center dot and that's all it would have. And so the file size would be tiny compared to this. That's the beauty of the Fourier transform as it's used for audio signals or for imaging because you can compress things and represent them in terms of their spatial frequencies and get rid of the ones you don't need. So again, I you know this is the image we started with. You know, why why store every bit when you could recognize that there are spatial frequencies here and gradual transitions that you could represent as a sine wave. I mean think about it this way. I could do bit I could do a, a decrease in intensity of an image as a bunch of bits like this. And then I have to pay all the price for all the bit levels for all these. Or I could say, hey that kind of looks like part of a sine wave, right? And show it as a gradual transition. Well then I've decreased the amount of data storage I need. And so look at this example here. This is 750 by 558 pixels. If I look at it in bitmap format, it's 1.3 megabyte. If I do it in JPEG format, which is Fourier transform compressed, it's only less than 100 kilobytes. And the compression is this good or better for any image. This is just an example one I used to show you, but you'll see this with any image. So that shows you applications of the, um, of the Fourier transform and something you use all the time. Same for video compression. You know, if you look at a, 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 any video you look at on your phone, that has both audio and video compression using Fourier Transform. So that's it for Fourier Transform. There's only two lectures this week for this, two, lex, two parts of the lecture for this week, and go through the review, and we'll see you in the lecture part for the quiz.